Natal in South Africa stretches for 463,000 square miles. It's almost twice the size of Texas. Without granite, the Creighton and modern continental crust wouldn't exist. Granite forms when minerals in the crust melt, then react with water, cool, and crystallize. Because it is made of lighter minerals, granite is less dense than other rock in the mantle, so it floats on the surface and mixes with other rocks to form rafts of land. The Kopval Craton is not totally built from granite. The oldest rocks here are these amazing pillow lavas exposed along the Kamadi River. Three and a half billion years ago, they form under the sea as lava emerges from an underwater volcanic vent. Upon contact with water, the lava immediately gains a solid crust, which then cracks and oozes additional large blobs called pillows. These rocks are amongst the oldest that we know. It's basically identical to uh, pillow laws that we see on a recent ocean floor or in settings like Hawaii. The Kamadi pillow lavas begin their life on the ocean floor, but are pushed up out of the sea to form part of a continent. But where did the granite come from? To create it, you need the right mix of minerals. A new theory suggests that life itself may have provided the missing ingredients. It may sound like an outlandish idea, but there's some evidence that living organisms that use photosynthesis appeared around the same time that the continents began to grow, 3.8 billion years ago. Scientists suggest that early organisms, microbes, help speed up the breakdown of rock emerging at the Earth's crust. Over hundreds of thousands of years, this rock breaks down into new minerals, which sink back into the mantle. Deep below the surface, they heat up and form granitic magma. The magma rises into the protocontinent, freezes, and forms huge solid rafts of granite. Now stabilized, the craton begins to grow, forming new baby continents. But cratons are not the only factors at work. More powerful forces are building up deep within the planet. Forces that have the power to rip apart land masses and smash them together changing the face of the planet forever. Four and a half billion years ago, the Earth forms. For many years, it is bombarded by asteroids and meteors. Slowly, the molten planet cools and small land masses form around cratons of granite rock. Massive forces from deep within the planet rip apart and smash these small proto-continents together as they grow into the large land masses we see today. The surface of the Earth, the crust, is made up of a giant jigsaw of interlocking pieces called tectonic plates. The separate plates themselves sit on the mantle, the layer between the crust and the Earth's core. Although the mantle is made of rock, the heat and pressure deep down mean it's flexible enough to allow the plates above to move up to several inches a year. Evidence for the theory of continental drift was first proposed in 1912 by German scientist Alfred Wegener. He noticed that identical fossils were discovered oceans away from each other Paleontologist Professor Mark McMenamin of Mount Holyoke College in Massachusetts is an expert in fossil records. Wegener noted that a freshwater organism cannot cross a salty sea. And so if you find the fossils of a freshwater organism or a land creature on two continents that are now greatly separated by distance, they must once have been closer together. By identifying like fossils on different continents, scientists can map which continents were joined in the past. The fossil distributions will tell us where 
fossils um, occur and how the continents must have been juxtaposed. Fossils that are identical but occurring in very different parts of the world imply that the continents have drifted. When he first proposed his theory of continental drift, Wegener was laughed at. The idea that continents could actually move was considered preposterous. The problem was, he didn't know how the continents moved. The missing mechanism wasn't discovered until the 1960s. Plate tectonics is powered by heat. Plate tectonics is being largely driven by the fact that the interior of the Earth is much hotter than the surface. The temperature at the center of the core is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's as hot as the outer parts of the sun. Much of the heat is left over from the collisions and massive bombardment during the early days of the Earth. The rest comes from radioactive decay of heavy elements in the core. Heat escaping from the core creates convection currents in the next layer of the Earth, the mantle. The process is like a lava lamp where heat from the bulb at the bottom creates convection currents in the oil, pushing the synthetic lava upward. The heat melts part of the mantle and sends plumes 